Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Monday Memo and uh, a, a few interesting things have happened in the last couple of weeks and I'd love to share some thoughts on what they were. Uh, first off, I just recently had to pay my subscription for the year ahead so I'm still a global chartered management accountant and can use a few letters after my name. And interestingly, I had a team leader come to me who was asking, you know, what should they do? What should be the next qualification and certification they should go go for? And they came to me uh, as I was uh, SEMA qualified and they said, oh, I, should I do, do a SEMA qualification? And I found myself in a very awkward position because I suppose in the earlier part of my career, which was predominantly uh, UK and Ireland based, I felt that, you know, a lot of the accounting qualifications for ACCA, ACA, SEMA had an awful lot to offer. I, I, I would have immediately said, yeah, any one of those is, is a really good starting point for you. But I suppose having worked in multinationals and, and even smaller enterprises since then, uh, and looking back on it, I was sort of encouraging her to say, well, maybe you should be focusing on a finance MBA. And then I was thinking, was I even giving her good advice by suggesting, you know, uh, a finance MBA? Because where she ultimately wanted to get to was, was a senior management position, an American multinational or a global multinational and I guess that's where the MBA was advice was coming from. You know, and, and, and obviously, I felt like it has to have a finance angle because the language of the business is the numbers. And if you can deconstruct those, you can then put into some sort of sense or make some sense of how decisions are going to impact and influence the numbers. And that way you can give better insights and foresights to, to those you're trying to influence. But then if you're looking to make a short-term impact, these MBA programs, if you're trying to have a career, unless you're going to take some time out, uh, and that's going to be fairly restrictive for some people, particularly if they want to go to a prestigious university, which requires a, a large investment up front, perhaps, is you're more than likely going to engage in some sort of part-time program, and that's going to distract you perhaps from making a, 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 fuller, a fuller commitment or a fuller impact in the short run, even though you could probably say you're learning along the way. So, so even that decision might not uh, be useful for everyone else. So you could say, should someone not be, if they're looking for a certification, pursue something like a Lean Six Sigma type yellow belt, green belt or black belt type uh, learning or, or certification in the short run because you're delivering projects and results as you go along and impacts to the organization's bottom line. So maybe that could have been another approach. Or given that... I suppose in our profession, we give a lot of insights and more of us could be better at giving foresights. There's some newer certifications and qualifications around financial modeling that are coming around. You've got now got chartered financial modelers and so on appearing, which again, is that where we should be encouraging people to develop? Or you could take the view that, you know, who cares about whether you're chartered or not if you've got a qualification after your name? I mean, what do employers think about this? As long as you've got the right attitude and can demonstrate that you delivered results consistently, then then who matters? I mean, if I look at my own scenario, I haven't actually had to apply for a job uh, for for over a decade now. The jobs have found me based on results and and so and in terms of what the teams I've led have delivered. So, if you've got a good reputation, do you really need letters after your name? or to put your certifications on a CV or a resume. So it just feels that, and again, I felt really confused given the advice, because things just have seemingly changed from what I would have advised someone probably a decade ago. And I was just curious to see what, and understand and hear what your thoughts were. You know, do certifications still matter? Do some, um, are some more valuable than others? I mean, are things like financial modeling or, or FP&A, there's even an FP&A qualification now with it via the Association of Finance Professionals. Do these things matter more now because they're newer and therefore more more prominent or should be where we uh, seek to train and develop ourselves in? Or should we stick with the traditional ACAs, ACCAs, uh, CMAs, uh, CPAs and so on of the world? Or should we be getting a few different ones and adding those to our boat? And anyway, where do we go to figure out which is the right one to do? And then I suppose it always comes back to, well, what does your ideal career look like? What sort of roles do you see yourself doing in three, 
years or so time, what sort of conversations you're having, what type of organizations and industries are you operating in? You know, who are you talking with? Are you leading a team? Are you part of a team? What type of, uh, I suppose, compensation are you looking for? Are you looking for a bigger variable element of your compensation or, or more of a salary where it's less about the performance you've driven in that particular year? And then I suppose the right thing then is to look at what skills you have now, what qualifications, certifications, experiences, how you come across with others, how they would rate you and figure out where you, what you need to be doing to get from where you are to where you sort of would like to see yourself in three or so years time. And then and only then I think you can decide which certifications and qualifications and trainings are the ones that you should be maybe looking looking for and looking to do. And then I suppose the next question is, and this is where probably the Strength in the Number show comes in to help and the guest mentors, is that, you know, there's so many different qualifications now in there and people have taken so many paths. Which is the right thing and to do and go and pursue from a qualification and certification and training perspective? And I guess that's why the interviews with the guest mentors are very useful because uh, most of them have at least one accounting and finance type qualification and you can hear from them how it sort of benefited them in their careers. So there's loads of, I suppose, options and opportunities and I guess it's how do you then quickly make a decision uh, so that if you are investing your time, your energy into improving and developing, that it's being invested in the right way and you get the biggest the best return for you and your career and also being able to make an impact for your organizations. So look, I hope you've found the the conversation today thoughtful and interesting. And again, I'm always curious to understand your thoughts. So please reach out to us on LinkedIn or with this post. And we really appreciate you investing your time with us today. So until next time, take care of yourselves and let's keep on building our strength in the numbers. 